How are you today, everyone? I'm confident you are well. Hopefully, this will be our last, uh, if you like, video lecture. This is almost like an anecdotal content. Will not be very much substantive. I'm not sure you will be required to write an essay on this, but it will be helpful to top up, you know, this aspect of our questions philosophically. You know, we have engaged some philosophical questions. So we thought we should add this. So at least you have some metaphysical questions, you have some epistemological questions, some ethical questions. Social and political is still ethical. So if we don't touch on it, we can still do so in level 200. But this rather interesting you know, topic can be summarized briefly for you to have a fair idea of the question of personal identity, person identity. Mm -hmm. Who am I? See? Who am I? When I say I'm a person, who am I? Now, what is the philosophical discussion or question underlining this, this concept of personal identity? Take note, we all change over time, isn't it? We presume that we change over time. If you doubt that, you should know that the baby that was lying on mommy's lap, you know, some 22 or 25 years ago, that is yourself, eh? Where mommy will put powder at places and carry you and throw you up in the, in the air. It's not the person sitting there or standing there currently listening to this lecture. You see, we all change over time. Yet we also say we remain one and the same person. You see, we change, yet we say we are the same. As in, a crime that someone committed 20 years ago will still be there. I mean, if we find out later that that crime was committed by the person, we arrest them to pay for their crime because we presume that he's the same person, even after 20 years, you see. Yet we admit that people change. So the philosophical question is what makes you the same person that you are now? Mm? The same person that you are now and yet different from the other person. So what establishes sameness and what establishes distinction in the concept of person, person or personal identity. Okay, now on the screen now, I credit this to my colleague again. What is it that makes early, uh, the earlier person, that is the one before, see, on your screen you see before, is this person the same as the later person after? See, this is what he has become. These are celebrities, so you can you can make your own judgment. This is the brother, and this is how he looks like now at the time that we, we downloaded this to show you. He has changed his face. He has teeth like that of a tiger. I don't know if it's a tiger or a cat or something. See the next one. I don't think we will struggle to know who is on the screen. What is it that makes the earlier person, this is the earlier person before, the same as the later person after this? What is it that makes the later person, see, this is the later person, a sister with a crown and some long, uh, whatever, fingernails. What makes this person, the later person, the same as the earlier person, the earlier person is a brother, at least as we see him. Okay, the question of sameness. How do we determine that you are the same person that was on your mommy's lap some 20 years ago and now you standing up, you know, grown, all grown with hairs everywhere. Are you the one that was lying on your mommy? You say, yes, we, we, we assume that yes. People are the same. So the person, when I say people are the same, you are the same person that has undergone change. So are you the same or you have changed? What is this thing that establishes sameness? That's the question. Not just that, that's one half of a person of personal identity. What also distinguishes you from me? You see, so what makes you the same person continuity and what helps to distinguish you from me. Is it your fingerprint? 
or is it your thumbprint when you're going to vote? How do you establish sameness at the lecture hall when you're going to take an exam at University of Ghana? We look at your ID card. Some of you, your level 100 face <laughs> on your ID card raises contention when you get to level 400 and you're using the same ID. People say, are you this? The point is, how do we establish sameness unambiguously? And more so, how do we distinguish person A from person B? That is a philosophically interesting debate, which has implications. I already gave you some inklings of what it could be. So on the screen, you see before and after. Now, personal identity. This debate or this discussion, this question of personal identity cannot be had outside of the claim of essential versus non-essential characteristics. Remember, led to essence. The essence of a thing is that which makes it what it is, without which the thing ceases to be what it is. So if you are an essentialist, then you believe that everything has something in it that makes it what it is. And if that thing ceases or that thing is not in it, it ceases to be what it is, okay? So essentialism is already assumed in the debate or the discussion of personal identity. We take it for granted, we assume that persons have something in them or in their being that makes them what they are. A person has something in her being that makes her what she is, without which she will cease to be what she is. Okay, so when we make a claim of personal identity, it already suggests that we are assuming essentialism. This is assumed, the principle that is assumed if you allude to what personal identity. What is essentialism? We'll meet it again now. It is that view that everything has an essence or a set of essential characteristics that makes it what it is. Okay, we have seen it already. Your essential characteristics make a crucial contribution to who you are or your identity. Now, non-essential characteristics are called accidental characteristics. You have seen it, okay? So that even if we don't do the cultural identity reference, you will see that it seeks to show you the essential and non-essential meaning of what cultural identity. Essential meaning is what is debunked by the author Miles. She debunks any claim of essentialism uh, for the claim of a cultural identity. But then, she defends the claim that there can be accidental meaning mm, to the notion of cultural identity. So you may identify me culturally in the accidental sense of it, by the food I eat, the language I speak, what have you. You can accidentally say that I am Ga because you heard me speak so much Ga. One of your, your colleagues asked me, look, you speak Ga when you are, sometimes when you are doing your presentations, we hear you speak Ga, then before long you speak tree. And sometimes we fancy, and they are all quite eloquent. So now we don't know who, who, who what uh, ethnic group or, or language you really belong to or participate in. And I said, that is the thing about accidental features. The fact that you saw me wearing Chinese dress or eating with the, with the sticks does not in itself mean that I am essentially Chinese or what have you. That's a debate that is going on in the cultural identity topic, the last one that I don't want us to add. If you have this, it's more than enough, but you see it, maybe a, a one or two of it in your exam, the multiple choice, I mean, okay. Okay, so here again, you see that non-essential non means accidental. It is not essential to the thing. If it is not in it, the thing doesn't cease to be what it is. I give you instances when we discuss Plato. The phone's essence is to receive and make calls or receive and send messages, period. Radio and camera and what have you added to a phone are all accidental to the phone's essence. Mm. Accidental characteristics do not make a crucial contribution to your identity. We come back to our discussion on personal identity. Now, what are the theories of personal identity, views that have been proposed by authors? The question, what are the essential characteristics of yourself that makes you the same person you are, different from other people? So same, sameness and difference. What establishes sameness between you, person one, at bed and you right now, for example. What establishes sameness? I've already said that. I will ask you, that's I'm emphasizing. 
what establishes sameness, continuity in you when you were one year old and you now that you are 20 years. That's the first part of the question of personal identity. Then also, what makes you different from me? Now, a response to that has been the body criterion or the body solution. And then the second response has been locks criterion or locks solution. So if the, the other one is body, then maybe locks own may not necessarily be body, body criteria. What does the body solution say? Some call it a bodily view, the bodily criteria, the bodily solution. This view is often attributed to materialists, matter, those who think that reality is ultimately what matter, not mind. This view is opposed to idealism, but you will learn it substantively later. Okay? So the view is attributed to materialists, those who reduce every reality, ultimate reality to what material substance. will say that what distinguishes you from me and what makes you the same person over time is what your body. You have a body that I have not owned. You have had your body since you were born and you have your body and I have mine. That's what distinguishes us. According to this view, what establishes sameness of person consists in the sameness of the human body over time. I just said that I am this person I am because I have this body and you are you because you have a different body, period. There's the bodily view. For person A to be the same person as B, A and B must have the same body. On this view, we are fundamentally our bodies. Remember I told you that is what the materialist is often attributed to those who hold materialism to be the case. That's the essential characteristic that makes you you and different from other people is your unique body. I will ask you this, your unique body. Locke's criterion mm -hmm, is which one? It will not be the bodily view, obviously. So what is Locke's criterion? On Locke's account, what makes us the same person over time is not the sameness of the body, but take note, but what sameness of consciousness mental state. But we want to be careful because of how some have used mental state. By consciousness, it means perhaps the body's activity, not necessarily a non-physical aspect, but consciousness captures it well. So keep it like that, sameness of consciousness. That is later person B, that is you are 20 years, exhibit the same consciousness as earlier person A, you at one year. If and only if the later person can remember the earlier person's thoughts and actions. So he's saying that you are the same you because you remember, you alone can remember who you have been all this while. He's using remembrance, it's one of them. Self-consciousness is another, and consciousness is another, all the three. So he's looking at something non-bodily, your consciousness. You are aware of yourself, self-consciousness, that's one. I can be aware of yourself for you. Only you can be aware of yourself. You see that? Hmm. Then not only self-consciousness, but consciousness and then memory. You can remember things for yourself. I can remember what you are for you. In other words, mental state distinguish you from me. Bluntly speaking, we'll engage in some, some, some more sometime in the future. So if you can remember the earlier you, your thoughts and actions, then that is what makes you you. I cannot remember for you. You remember for yourself. Now, if B can remember A's thoughts and actions, then A is the same person as B. You see how problematic that can be? That is what Kant faces when he uses that criterion. The three are what? Consciousness, self-consciousness, and memory. You see it shortly. But the memory bit is what creates problems for Locke in his uh, establishment of what personal identity. Memory will be problematic, why? Because we may not always remember. I am me, we assume that I am me, but I may not remember every particular detail of what happened to me. See, when I was two years, for example, how will I remember everything? Even now that one year ago, can you remember everything there? As soon as you cannot remember by Locke's criteria, we may be considered a different person. And if I'm a different person, can you hold me accountable for what I did then, positively or negatively? If I wasn't the same person, it has moral implications. Remember the other one to determinism. Okay. 
So sameness of the person is established by continuity of consciousness, says Kant. Hey, there's what? Lock. <laughs> Lock, which consists in the ability to have memory connection between the later self and the earlier self, memory connection. Personal identity goes where consciousness or memory goes, regardless of what the body is in question. So if in some of the movies we watch and in some practical instances, if the, the person in the body, see, the second chance, those who watched it, if the person, okay, if the rich man's, so to speak, ghost inhabits the poor man's body, and then he starts now behaving like the rich man would have been, the body is for the poor man. But the person, so to speak, by Kant's language, the person living in that body is not the poor man. And so who is the new person that we have? Is it the poor man or the rich man that has inhabited the guy? Now he can play the piano. Now he can brush up, he wants to look neat, he, he eats a certain kind of meal, all because the being inside that body has changed. Locke will say the new person is a rich man who's quote and unquote ghost, if you like, eh, has inhabited the body because the body doesn't define you. Yet, if we were going to thumbprint to vote, it is the body that we all will look out for. The body's thumbprint is what, so if the rich man had a certain password that gave him access to his, uh, his, uh, his office or something and it is locked and they needed a thumbprint, you can't say the rich man's ghost is the one that will enter the room, would it? No, it's the body of the poor man, though the one living in him now is rich. The point we are making is tantamount to something like what? Uh, uh, Locke is saying, Locke is saying that the real you is not the body. It is something more than the body. Your likes, your dislikes, your abilities, your ability, you see, consciousness, uh, self-consciousness, memory. You can draw an artist, you can play football. It, it is that which defines your identity as a person not necessarily the body, okay? Now, you see the critique I raised? But if I'm going to do my exam, or if I'm going to the board meeting as a rich man who has passed, but my spirit was wandering, so I had taken the body of that young guy. That young guy entering the business uh, uh, room or the cabinet meeting will not be allowed in. Maybe it's a small boy's body, but the person living inside is a, it's a grown man, supposedly. When he stands behind the door, they know, kung kung, he say, I'm here to conduct affairs for my, my cabinet. And all they see is some small boy standing there. Would they admit the boy in? Maybe that perhaps the body inside is a grown man. It's, excuse me, the, the, the person inside is a grown man. I'm showing you the contention. And then when you bring it to the local setting, our African setting, it's even the better. Where you see the young girl speaking, they say, wait, they're nana asambe. This one, there's grandmother has come back. This is where they talk about reincarnation. You see, Jesus told them, um, John the Baptist, he said, Elijah has come. He was referring to John the Baptist because he had the Elijah-like spirit, or the Elijah non-physical part. Now, is that what Locke is saying? Perhaps not necessarily, but there's something that you can share here that Locke doesn't think a person, person, person is identified by their body. No, personal identity for Locke is not a bodily matter. So he counters the bodily view. Okay, that's on Locke's account, consciousness, self-consciousness and memory are what constitute personal identity. I'll leave it at this, at least for the introductory level. I'm sure we'll take it up again now, level 200, hopefully when we do problems of philosophy. Why is the question of personal identity important? I'll leave you with that. Practices of moral blame and praise seem to presuppose a belief in personal identity. I can't blame you if you were not the one who pushed me over the wall yesterday. If you are not the same person, then it is difficult to hold people accountable, whether positively or negatively, for what they do. 
planning for the future. How do you plan for the future? If you don't have continuity in, your, in yourself, you are not a person with continue, what the word, with continuity, how do you plan? If you, are, you won't be you tomorrow, then how can you make projections about your tomorrow? Our interaction with people is guided by presupposition of personal identity over time. That's so true. Why you will not admit uh, Johnny Bravo in your life again because he hurt you some time past. You won't because he's the same person. But do people change? And if people change, is it their identity as a person that has changed or something about them that has changed? Do you believe in the Elijah spirit? Do you believe that John the Baptist is, uh, excuse me, Elijah is with us again? That child that exhibits that extra, everything about a person, sometimes even tribal marks, physical, uh, you know, part of the person shows that this is grandmother has come back. For certain traditions, we believe in that. Do venerate her and take care of her because that is grandma come back, reincarnation. We can interrogate them a bit more. What is important for our brief presentation here is for you to see that it's not a straightforward matter at all, determining what makes you the person that you are over time and distinct from the other person. We may not be able to rely solely on the thumb because if it is the body, then as soon as we cut off your thumb, you should be different from who you are. If you bleached your body so much that you have changed, or someone lost their limbs, God forbid, in an accident or something, would we say they are not the same person? Your body has changed, like I showed you instances of it, but is the person the same? Then it suggests that it couldn't have been just the body. But if it is not the body, then what defines our essential being? as person. I wish you well. All the best. <laughs>